guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Steve Sleepy, and today I have Steve Noble from Noble Moto with me. And why you might ask? Because hey, the Harley's up on the stand. Uh, you know, I saw Phil start it when we loaded it, but you know, I don't know much about it. So instead of me messing around, messing something up, and kind of going around, I said, why not go to the source and bring a guy who knows Harley's in? He can give it an eyeball. Maybe give me some directions, and heck, maybe I can even uh, squeeze his uh, arms there and get him to help me out with something today. So, I mean, there's some obvious things, like Steve, you know we have to do the tail light, not we, but I have to sure. do the tail light. So that's something I can handle myself. But there's a lot of other things that are new to me that I'm sure you know that we maybe can go over and you can say, okay, you got this, you got this, it's a good idea to do this, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why he's here and that's what we're gonna try to do. So what do you think, man? It's a great looking bike, man. These were really cool. They were kind of like a modern vintage bike. You had the springer on the front end, but you still had the soft tail suspension, the twin cam engines, great highway motor. Okay. They love to be wrung out. You know, you don't have to short shift them or lug them or anything. Matter of fact, it's better if you don't. Uh, so these are really good bikes. It's fuel injected. You got modern brakes, front and rear. Is it so, fuel injected? Yes, this is a fuel injected model. Uh, there's no carburetor. Oh, right hell there. yeah, dude. Yeah, it's going to start thought, all the time. Was, I thought it was carbureted. No, no carburetor. So what year What year did they get carbureted or uh, fuel injected? The la so they started injecting them in the mid-90s. The cop bikes wow. and then a couple of the touring bikes had the injection, uh, which was the M&M, which I can't remember what it stands for. Uh, the m m fuel injection. Um, oh, then they man. eventually switched to Delphi and they actually ran the carburetor all the way up to 05. Wow. Or through 05. Well, this is 05. Yeah, so this would have been, so it would have been an option, but usually by 05, it was like the base. I will take fuel injected over carburetion any day of the week. They're key in carburetors, so they're Japanese carburetors. Right. So you know they run. Right, yeah. right, right. But no, but this will be nicer because now it's not gonna get mad at me if it's cold. Oh yeah, or no, if it's it'll hot. start right up every single time. Okay. So one of the important things to remember about Harleys, the big difference between Harleys and Japanese bikes is Harleys have three separate oils on them. They have a separate engine oil, okay. then the transmission has its own separate oil, and then the primary case on the left side also has its own separate oil. Okay. Unless you have a Sportster, in which case the primary and the transmission are one. So when you check your oil, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, or be very aware that you have three that you should be checking. Okay. Now the nice thing is with your engine oil, you know, you obviously you can check it and you can check it on the kickstand. It doesn't actually have to be straight up and down. Like okay. the metric bikes. Okay. So that is nice. It's easy to check in the it morning. Is, especially if you, you don't have a ride. center stand, yeah. you know. <laughs> now the primary and the transmission do have to be checked with the bike up straight, because it okay. is just a gearbox. But the nice thing is it's kind of a safe bet that you can inspect the thing and say, hey, if it's not leaking out, it must still be in there with the primary and the transmission because you're never going to burn primary or transmission oil like you could potentially burn engine oil. Right. So you should still check it on a regular basis, especially if you're buying a used bike. Inspect it for leaks. Make sure you're not leaking transmission fluid out. what you're saying is out. if you don't see a puddle underneath it, you're probably okay. Maybe. Yes, or it's completely out of oil. <laughs> it's completely out of oil. All right, so that was a pretty good rundown. So what are we looking at? Now we lifted the bike up. What are we looking at? What are we doing? So we're going to take a quick look at things like your shifter linkage. Uh, so right here, we have an aftermarket little shifter linkage bar that runs from your shifter up here. Don't hate on my flames. Don't oh, hate man. on my flames. I love the flames. All right. You do you. We don't judge. <laughs> we're all inclusive here. It matches my arm. Oh, I got, I got a wee little flame right there too. <laughs> uh, but the big thing with these is it's just like a little ball and socket joint in here. Yeah. And you want to check to see if they have any slop in them. Because uh, usually what happens is they'll get a little slop and then one day you'll try to shift into third and the shifter linkage will just fall off. So what can I do to tighten this up if it has slop? Because it seems like I got a little slop over here. Well, a little slop down here is kind of okay. You could replace the bushing in it but really it's just the joints inside this thing. Okay. Uh, odds are you're probably just gonna have to replace this. It's probably not really a rebuildable unit. Do you think it needs to be done at this point? No, it's not. I wouldn't say it's bad enough that it needs to be done, but it's something I would keep an eye on. Would it Maybe hurt? another 20,000 miles. You might be putting a new one on there. It seems like it should be adjustable to get perfect. The stock ones are adjustable. So you can actually adjust the length of it there to get your appropriate toe height. Yeah. Uh, and at one point it had a rear shifter on it. So you had your heel and toe shifter on there too. So one of the first things I noticed about this engine is you have compression releases on here. Those are generally not factory. What those are for is you press them in and it's a wee little vent to the compression, to the combustion chamber. Then when you hit the start button, it lets a little bit of a gas out like any other compression release. And it makes it easier for the starter to crank the engine over. Mm -hmm. That's okay. usually done when somebody's up the compression and probably put a big bore kit on this thing. Mm. So you're probably sitting in like maybe 95 inch, 
10 to 1 compression. This is probably a pretty hot motor. Okay. So we also notice on the right side here, you've got Screaming Eagle on the rear head, CNC ported on the front head. That means they're most likely an aftermarket head. So it's at least a stage one head. There's no real way of knowing unless you could get the serial numbers off of it, which you usually can't unless you pull the tank and the rocker boxes off. But you do have some aftermarket parts here. And again, that comboed with uh, the higher compression, this is probably a pretty hot motor. You add that in with a nice two into one performance based pipe, this thing's gonna go really well. It's probably gonna have a nice flat power band to it too, so it'll pull just all the way through the RPM range. You also have a Kiryakin hypercharger on here that they sold a lot of in the 90s. <laughs> they look cool, they don't really do a lot. They aren't far enough out in the wind to make a difference, but man, they look cool. And it's free. And it's free, so we're just gonna run it. It won't hurt anything, you yeah. know. Right here, brother, got your old school Harley Davidson logo. Got the patent numbers that nobody's ever gonna check and you got your freedom American bar and shield right here to tell everybody you're not a pussy, yeah. All right, so we're gonna do, uh, we're doing something. We're gonna check, what are we checking, the oil? We're checking the primary oil primary. and the primary chain tension. Okay. So that's all through this nice little cover right here. Okay. Some of them don't have it, luckily you do. So we got T27 Torx bit. Do we need a tray just in case it leaks oil? Uh, it will not leak oil unless it's incredibly over full, in which case we need to drain that oil out. Okay. Are you impressed I had Torx bits without having a Harley? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> You can buy stainless, oh, this one's really long. I forgot about this one. Okay, so there's a long one. So orientation that is, is that important. That is your three o'clock. Okay. And that one goes all the way through to the backside. Gotcha. Is it holding anything behind it or is it just? No, I mean, it's holding the case back a little bit if you were to take the whole outer cover off. Okay. But other than that, no, that one's a long one too. So you have a gasket here, which is usually gonna be reusable. All right, so down in here, we can see, if we look down towards the bottom, you should be able to see the oil level down in there. And it's right about to the bottom of that plastic primary chain puck right there. Yeah. So that's pretty good, because if you line it back up, that's almost to the bottom of this cover back here. Now, if you go a little bit lower and look up in there, you should be able to see the primary chain, the chain up here in top. I don't know if you can see that or not. So if you can oh, see right yeah. here at the tip of the screwdriver, that is the primary chain tension, or the primary chain. Yeah. So that should have about half inch to five eighths of movement to it. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so you're cool. in pretty good shape. Also, if you look down here, you can look at this plastic puck here and you can lift it up a little bit and you see you got a little bit of wear underneath there. It's not too bad. I wouldn't haul off and replace it, but if you ever have to take this cover off, I'd spend the 20 bucks on a new puck. Okay, and is it pretty easy to replace once you get it in there? You take that snap ring off, it comes off, put the new one on, put the snap ring back on. Cool. One of the first things I learned about Harleys is they're way easier to work on than metric bikes. <laughs> it will make you angry at times. Now on the Harley, your engine oil, on the soft tail model anyways, is in this tank that's right underneath the seat. This is designed to be checked with the bike over on the side stand. So you can pull the dipstick out and we can see this shows there's oil in it, but it shows it's over full right now because the bike is up straight. It's not actually over full. However, when you check this, you wanna start the bike up and let it run for a few seconds because what happens is some of the oil will drain down into the bottom of the engine case because it's a dry sump system. So you wanna start it up, let it run for a few seconds, circulate all the oil, turn it off, then check your oil to get an accurate measurement. So we're gonna take a look at the transmission oil on this. Okay. So right here in the front of your transmission, you have a dipstick. It takes a 3 8 Allen socket. Should be able to just lefty loose that thing right on out of there. And just like the dipstick in your car, check it out. Your oil is on the up just above full. That's good, a little over full is not gonna hurt anything. I'm sure somebody on the internet will say it will, but it won't. So you're good to go with that. So we can just thread that back in there. Snug it up, it's got no ring. Don't need to kill it. All right, and the cool part is, is that if we want to try to start this or do anything, we know all of our fluids are okay and we're not gonna blow anything up in that regard. Absolutely, so we are pretty much ready to start this bike up. Okay. Shall we give it a shot? Yeah. So we've gone over everything. We've seen that it has oil in all the places it's supposed to have oil. We know it has gas, a questionable gas gauge. I still don't know where the fucking key is. Can you show me where the key is? So you see this little on-off switch right here? Yeah, I've been turning that on and it turns the bike. Oh, come on. 
Right there, man. You can lock it on. Hold lock on. It off. So I had the key inside. See, you kept telling me to flip stuff up, so I kept flipping this stupid thing up. Well, you know what this is for. Oh, yeah. Put your weed in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got the name for the bike. Oh, yeah. So, so, guys, thanks for all your suggestions. You know who actually nailed it was my daughter. My daughter said, Dad, the baked potato. <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. So this is the baked potato. All right. Um, all right. So yeah, look at this. I have a key. So uh, so it's not. So here's the other thing. A Harley key is not a key. It's just like a fucking suitcase lock. Yeah. It's basically for disabling <laughs> it. Like right now. Yeah. You could close it up and nobody can turn it on. Okay. Or you can unlock it and then it just works as normal oh. on off switch. So now it makes sense when you see Harley guys with the little retractable key things on their, yeah. their thing, because then they just use it to unlock it and then it retracts and exactly. then you never lose your key. Right. So actually, I can just keep this inside here. And if you just don't even want to deal with it, you can just leave it like that. Yeah, but then you come out and then your bike's gone. Right? Make sure you got full coverage. Okay, Yeah. we got that. All right, well, you ready? You want to try this thing? What do we got to do? Here we go. It's, it's fuel injected. Fuel injected. Shit, right? Turn the ignition on, hit the handlebar switch to run. Uh, okay, run. Oh. Fuel bump primes, hit the start button. did get the sound of a motorcycle right. Yes, they have definitely nailed that one down. What I was trying to tell you while this thing was belching out freedom. audible awesome of freedom, yeah, belching out freedom was- Freedom, brother. It makes me want to throw away my helmet. Oh, <laughs> I still wear a helmet on mine. No, I'm kidding. I never you know wear a helmet. You know why? Because my head's not harder in the pavement. Of course not. No, I'm an all the gear, all the kind of guy. Sure. I, I've, I've been down at 105 miles an hour mm. and I'm still here telling you about it because all I had right. a leather jacket, I had helmet, I had boots, I had the whole thing on. You know what my favorite thing about wearing full gear on a Harley is? Then when you go past a pack of brothers without gear on, I, I hope they're just horrified by the sight of me in right, safety right. gear. Now, now, granted, some of you guys out there watching this are Harley guys, and we're not, we're not being mean. Obviously, we both own Harleys, and he's kind of a Harley technician. I have a Harley tattoo. Right. Like, but I'm into these things. We don't necessarily fall into the cosplay aspect of the Harley thing. As much as this thing sounds badass, and I think it looks pretty badass, I don't feel like I need to add fringe. No, and everybody <laughs> needs a little self parody Although, although, Ooh. although, hold Get on. tassels? Oh yeah, we could, brother. <laughs> we could go yeah. back to some tassels. So this is not something that I, uh, you know, would usually put on the bike. We're so. putting it on. As soon as it comes to bed, I'm coming back out here, <laughs> putting this on. So, all right, well, it runs. I mean, like, so is there anything else I got to really be concerned about? Um, Tail lights. Well, you yeah. know, I mean, you know, when you take it for the first ride, just like any other bike, make sure each brake light works, make sure each brake works. Other than that, ride the snot out of it, man. All right, guys, time is money, and, and he's got to go because he's got to go make some more money doing uh, other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up today and try to get this thing out and on the road. But I appreciate you stopping by. You've given me the confidence now that, like, I know that the heartbeat, all the... The rudimentary elements of this bike are in good shape. Yeah, your fluids, you know, your brakes, most of the lights, everything else seems really <laughs> solid on it. I think, yeah, once you sort out the tail light and the turn signals and stuff, this thing will be a great mile eater for you. Yeah, exactly. And now I'm friends with my PO. He said that they're going to go riding on weekends, so hopefully we can all get together and do some rides with Absolutely. those Absolutely. Well. Oh, the ankle bracelets all out there, you know, ripping down the road. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. I'm excited to be a hell yeah brother guy now, so. <laughs> All right, well, you guys know, if it works, it ain't dumb. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for watching.